They were in a battle, not really pulling away from, until the fourth quarter and getting the 27-20 victory. They rode the hot hand of running back Mario Anderson, who ran for 144 yards and had a touchdown. He's closing in on 1,000 yards this season. Kind of quiet night for Seth Hennigan. He threw for 159 and one touchdown and one interception. He's still knocking on the door off of a 3,000-yard passing season. Right now, he's at 2,691 2 with two games and still a bowl game left to play. Uh, that's the goal, right, is to play in the conference championship, but all we can do is focus on beating UAB. So well, we're not talking about bowl games. We're not talking about anything about that. You're dealing with a bunch of 18 to 23-year-olds that are very, very prideful um, in playing and being the best version of themselves every single day. And the, the fact they get to showcase that on national television on a Saturday night in, in their home, and for a lot of these seniors, their last chance ever in Simmons Bank Liberty Stadium, I mean, that's enough to play for. And our guys are motivated. So let's get into that. You mentioned a bowl game. That's kind of what Memphis has to look forward to. I think we're still trying to figure out if they're mathematically knocked out of the conference championship. I think we found out that they probably were. Yeah. Uh, right now, if you look at the standings, you got Army still at 7-0 at the top. Two lanes right after them at 6-0. Navy's 5-1. Memphis is 4-2. and And so they still get the head-to-head -head with, with Tulane. Uh, but with only two games left in the season, it's just not looking like it's going to go no. go their way. No, and I think that, yeah, they do still have a lot left to play for. It's incredible for Memphis to get a double-digit win season any year. But this year we talked about it. We talked about it last week as well. That wasn't the goal, was to get 10 wins this year. You know, the, the goal was to get 12 wins and right. then go from there. And they weren't able to do it. And... Maybe we need to sit back and just say, you know what, that is okay. The, the expectations, maybe Memphis, Memphis's own expectations were a little bit too high. And maybe even the media, maybe we hyped them up a little bit too much, but they, you know, were definitely patting us on the back as we were hyping them up. <laughs> sure. So, yeah, I mean, a very, um, look, Ryan Silverfield's a great coach, very Ryan Silverfield answer there, yeah. where he's talking about we still have a lot left to play for. You hear coaches say all the time, we're focusing on this week. You know he's going to go back to his office, and he's going to be focusing on UAB, but he's also going to be looking ahead. I saw someone had him in the, um, the what is it, the Honolulu Hawaii Bowl. Mm -hmm. Because of the way the, the uh, bowl game rules work, that doesn't look like that's going to be possible, but it looks like they're going to be in a bowl like that. Yeah. And you know what? Go out there, get a win uh, in the bowl game. I think most Memphis fans will be happy. It also helps the basketball season is starting up, and you know how Memphis fans are, right. you know. Uh, let's pay attention. You know, it's great. Let's go to the Tigers football game. But, uh, you know, we got the basketball game tomorrow mm. and Tigers are 2-0. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. We said it's a disappointment. And so I think we're pretty much sticking to that. Yeah, a, a bowl game, whatever you get, they, they still have a possibility, whether it's 7, 8-2 and two right now. They can still two. get to another 10-win season. And last year that was a big deal because 10 it's wins was only, it was only the third time yeah. that they had done that mm. uh, in program history. So to get a chance to get to a bowl game again this year I think is going to be, going to be huge. Something – uh, in that echelon of an AutoZone Liberty Bowl, maybe. But I, I really am curious to see how this end of the season plays out, uh, really, for the entire AAC. Nobody expected Army to be in no. the conversation for the no. conference championship game. It's the first time they've been 9-0 in God knows yeah. how long. I forget what the year was, but it's been a very long time since they've been 9-0. So you really just have to tip your cap. To that program right now, and Tulane's kind of the same way. You're going to get the two. You're going to get the head-to-head -head with Tulane here at the end right. of the season, and so it might be a situation where you're just you could potentially just play spoiler, right, right, right. right. Which they up. will be trying. To yeah, do. they'll be trying to do either way. Um, so it'll it'll be interesting. That Rice game, I think, was another instance though of a team where it's the conversation we've had so many times this year. Charlotte, in particular, right. is a it was a game like that where you expect to blow this team out. And you're just watching the games. You're just waiting for them to pull away, right. waiting for them to pull away, and just never quite. But you never quite get there, and that's where you understand where it's like, even if they were to get into a championship game, a college football playoff, that would be uh, you're meeting the goal of the uh, expectation of the season at that point. But at the same time, it's like this. You look at this team. It's like it's not a playoff team. It's not a college football playoff team. No, I think also the problem is if if you're a fan of this team. 
you know that they're not going to make it to the college football playoffs. You know that they're not going to make it to the conference championship. Boise State's at 12. Right, yeah. right. It's insane. Yeah. And so you know that, and at the same time, you want your team to just go out there and put a good product on the field. And it's not that they didn't put a good product on the field. Well, it it's just win, kind right? of a – yeah, it wins a win. Uh, Rice not uh, having a good season. We looked at their defensive metrics going into the game. You know, they're, they're bottom half of the NCAA. So you want to go out there and you just want to watch them unleash that offense. And they really haven't done that at all this year. It, it's essentially, North Texas was the only game that they kind of, and they had to kind of pump it up, you know, and let's go get the, those big explosive plays. They're not really going for that. They're, they're going, they're trying to get Mario Anderson to over 100 yards, which is great. But at the same time, Mario Anderson's not the star of this team. It's Seth Hennigan. And when you're kind of holding him back, and Seth Hennigan's not having a great personal season either, but if you have Seth Hennigan and you have no wide receivers in that game get over 60 yards, if I'm a, fr- if I'm a fan of that team, I go and pay money to watch that, I'm frustrated. Air it out a little bit. You know, let me get my money's worth. I don't want to go, you know, it's essentially like uh, – Watching Ball State get a 20 to, <laughs> 27 to 20 win when they're trying to get into a bowl game. You know, you want this team to go out and be mad that they're not in the conference championship, be mad that they lost in the San Antonio. And there was a little bit of that, but you didn't see a ton of that. And I think it showed against Rice.